Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to episode 72 of my last play of none of it, Torment, Tides of a... Never know the name of it at the end part. Numeri, Numera, Numera, whatever you say. I have a dope here. And we, have, we found this one, who I believe is the murderer, who even though they said the murderer's already lost the city, so you can't catch her now, but we found her. And we've asked her about the... Uh, oh, she thinks I'm a beat with by the way, or all cast-offs. Uh, I've asked her about the Risen Chamber, and her eyes hardened, and she had a very suspicious... Where was it? Uh, a glint of understanding, yes, 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 a crooked grin. So, yeah. Let's see how this goes. Making a note. No, no, you must do something for me. Ah, of course we do. She caresses the black and jagged device, knobbed and betraying, protruding with antenna. A signal reminiscent of her, your tattoo is blazed on it. Okay. This is Tasha's Mercaster. I want you to enter his mirror and find out what you can about the what Jacka? I'm convinced. Janka? I'm convinced that's the key. What's a Mercaster? What's a Janka? If the Janka is the key, what does it unlock? What's a Mercaster? Ha! I'm really the first one to say the word to you. Oh, you're in for a surprise, dear brother. Okay, is that a brother as in? How Americans are there, you're my brother, oh, and you're like wrestler. Come on, brother, trying to run, you know, hook up a bear over and all that stuff. Or does he mean brother as I am really her brother? Every cast off has one, just like every cast off has this. She taps the tattoo on your head. No one knows what they're for. I don't used to think they were a byproduct of the transfer process, just like us. She seems lost in thought for a moment. Uh, then she asks her, shakes her head, whatever they came from. They can be used like a kind of temporal viewer. You rely, you relive an event in the life of the cast off whose Mercus, Mercaster it is. That event is called a mirror. Be used to spy on other cast off? Not, not spy, more like seeing pictures of their past, like watching them from inside their minds at times when they burned or, burned or raged or changed, when their life was at a moment of flux. Okay. What's a janka? You you don't know? I thought it was a common instrument. No, no, it might not be so much anymore. One of the curses of a long life. She laughs raggedly. Fashions come and go before you can know they exist. Probably easier just to let them go. Or make new ones of your own, like some of the other cast-offs. Sorry, uh, no, 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 not, not sorry. You should know this. You should know about things. History. That's what life is. Knowing and then doing. Maka, you need to focus. Tell him what he needs. She breathes deeply. A janket is an ancient woodwind. And this uh, one was kept in a sealed cave beneath massive doors from a prior world. It had powers, but I can't remember what those powers were. Right. Janka is the key. What does it unlock? The memories, doesn't it? That wasn't explained. Her brow for is confused for a moment. She curses. If I knew that, I wouldn't need your help, would I? Okay, calm down. Sheesh. She lets out a long sigh. He stole that memory from me. All oh, right. He, oh, my phone was buzzing for some reason. Uh, so if you did, that's what it was. Uh, all right. If you can find it for me, it will all come back. All of it. Okay. Why? Oh, why can't you enter the mirror? Don't you think I've tried? She snarls with sudden rage. A knife, a hand span from your neck. She didn't move, however. Do you think I would waste my time with a newborn? A thief who steals into my home. Who steals in... What? A thief who steals into my home. Her language is not very good. It steals into my home. Do you mean sneaks into your home? I've not stolen anything. I snuck in. Or... Technically, I had a digger do it, so I broke and entered in. That, that's not good English either, but you know what I'm saying? I broke in. But <laughs> I broke in, I meant. I didn't steal into my home. If there were any chance I could do this myself, her shoulders heave up and down with each angry breath. I try, and my mind fills with static, like I'm talking to a mudder. Only it slashes and stabs and burns me, and she blinks and, conf and then confused. Why am I angry? Did you? She straightened. She strengthens, flipping the knife back into her cloak. No, it'll all be fine. Just find the D word, Jank, and I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Tell you whatever you need to know. How do I enter Mur? An almost palpable hunger fills her eyes, a yearning 
Hold the Mercaster. You feel the tug immediately. Don't resist. Empty your mind and let the tides pull you into the Mercaster. She collects herself. Then just watch him. Watch for the jank. When you see what he's done with it, pull your mind away from Tash and tell me what you saw. Oh, and don't try to change anything, she says, almost as an afterthought. Why should I try to change anything in the mirror? What did you mean by that? Nothing serious, she says. It's as though speaking to an overly concerned child. She laughs suddenly. It's not like you can change the past, but I need you to learn a specific piece of information. If you change something, then you might go the wrong way. Mm, how do I enter the mirror? I'll do it. I'll enter the mirror for you. Never mind. Okay. She plungs Tasha's mercaster from the table. She looks at it. At you and back at the device, she licks her lips as if weighing her option, and then before she can hesitate any more, slaps it into your hands. It's surprisingly heavy. Do it, she sh she sh uh, she says. Uh, says she says. Her voice heavy. Find the jank. Bring me my answers. You focus on the device. You can feel something tugging at your mind. Do I need on my own, or are they gonna come with me? I haven't really rested. Oh crud! I'm on my own. Uh, yeah, I should have probably rested. Everything is wrong. I'm screenshotting that. Tasha's body, yours now, clings into a wet cloak. The world is too bright for night time. Everything is too clear, distance too close, edges too sharp, memories like blood flies, buzz around your head, whizzing around before you can catch them. <gasps> Hard ridden any? Heave their flanks and hoof behind you. I don't know what that word is. Any? Like you, and they've gone too long without rest. And there's Marrakan, a much newer Marrakan, as drawn by a pandering port portraitist. Too soft, too fresh, too pretty, all wrong on the wastes. You see the light of campfires, and in the humble village before you, a bigger, bright five. Okay, these are going to be affected, or is why these have been shown. Yeah, oh, I really should rest before I came here. It's pry. It's a pry? Pray? Inside a body that's too large burns too slowly. Greasy coils of smoke rise into the night. Villagers circle the bonfire, wailing and shaking. The headman's rough voice continues the ritual. From exile, you are released. Among the mourners, some echo, you are released. He throws a handful of powder into the fire. Metal salts, perhaps, and spray of shiny embers. Rises into the night, mostly gold, some green, some purple from wrath. You are released. The echo, they echo him. As the embers float out towards the plains and fade among the stars, you, your, and, well, and campfires, you hear Marco whisper, reverently, You are released. Marco, listen to me. We need to find a jank and protect your memories. Try to remember who you are and why you're here. Stare at the distant campfires and try to see what they are. Okay. What's going on here, Marco? Wait until the ritual is finished. Barge into the ritual. Um, she said not to try and change things. Come on with that one. Find the what? Marco stares at you, just unfounded, and then she shakes her head. Have a little respect, Hash. This is my home. We're here to save people. I've known for you. Oh, I'm, I'm past at the moment. A moment later, she adds, Not to mention the only danger to memories around here is you, Tash. Try your tidal surge on me and I'll burn those fancy eyes right out your skull. Tidal surge. That's what you used. There's a smile on her face. Like this isn't the first time Tash has teased her or that she's promised a grisly faint response. Ah. Joke, you sent me here. Oh, uh, and what are you doing? Let's see. There's a joke, you sent me here. Now there's no laughter in the hard glare, and for a moment she truly looks like the woman who sent you here. Enough, Tasha hissed. There are mourning a murdered man over there, and him? She points to the headman. He has a good... He's as good as raised me. I know these people. This means something to me, even if the whole world and everything wrong with it is just barking joke to you. She looks away from you and back into the prior going. Remember who you are and why you're here. Try to see what they what they are. Crud. 
Yes, that's good. He went down though. You squint your unnatural eyes and focus into the prow of the village. Everything else fades away. At last, the bloody campfire resolves into something crisper, and you see a faint shadow of, of men around them, men in long coats and broad hats, painstakingly clearing their jizzles and daggers. There are perhaps a hundred of them. Maka sees you staring and grunts. Sand Knight, from her tone, it's obvious that they're no friends of hers or yours. Great. Body to ritual. Wait until the ritual's finished. Try to remember who you are and why you're here. Amnesia. The memories try to buzz around away, but you are too quick for them. Seized in a squeeze, the body is you. Ah, oh, Tash, you already knew that, but now you know yourself as you did before. The body fits better. You're a cast off, and when you call on the tides, you can destroy memories. You're a soldier of sorts in the service of the military under the command of Pataraka. Uh, you're a scout, Mark and Spotted. Two of you are not warriors, you're specialists, you're killers. But you're not here to kill, you're here to promise something to the villagers and get the, an object, a flute of some sort. Ah, the jank. As for why, that memory and others remain beyond your reach. Okay, so that's helped. What's going on here, Marco? Answers without looking your way, her eyes are locked onto the fire and flesh inside it. Is what they do. One uh, one of the hill people dies. Never a burial, always upward. Plains people like me, we can bring kindling and weep, but we're forbidden to join the chant. After a pause, she adds, "I never got used to the smell of it. Even when they burnt Jupiter or, or Baal's Basilum, it's worse at the end." She shrugs. When it's done, there's no more wailing for them. It's really is a relief. She looks hopefully okay. Okay, the thing is, it says don't change things. But I don't know what this guy did. Did he barge into it and that's what caused the memory thing? Or did he let it finish? I'm going to barge him. You push past Marker into the ring of light cast by the burning body. The headsman gives you no acknowledgement, and before you can say a word, Marker jerks you backward. Loud number. These things matter to them, to me. When the ritual at last ends and the, the mourners move on, she leads you to the smouldering prior where the headman stands alone. He sniffs at the approach. Kim, he says, and the stranger. His eyes are large, milky marble. He puts his hand on her shoulders. You return in unpleasant times. She touches her cheek. I return because the times are unpleasant now. Uh, without another word, the three of you withdraw from the fire and enter next home. Maybe Taz removes the memory because it's unpleasant for her. Or does this guy do it, not Tash? And then she fantastically killed him. I think it was him. Nega's home is humble. That could be it. It's humble and small, hardly furnished and wholly under-decorated. Under On entering, he lowers his weary bulk onto the hash sock and gestures towards similar cushions for you and Marika. And then begins without Primble, whatever. They hung him from a tree. Oh, Garabai took their daggers to him, called it pruning blade to others expressions he has become oblivious to his own and he wears his pain in anger nakedly with a grunt the he continues they sent him home by skimmer along with the compact they made to the plains people he waves at the crumbled sheets of paper on the floor tick tick reads to me continue They've promised to put an end to our menace, Kin. He shakes his head. Why? We're always paid the blood price for whatever harm we've done. You know that. They know that. Yes, Marcus says softly. But the Sand Knights won't take shins. You know that, he grunts. The military is here to help. Neg, you are who we stand for. The small, the threatened, the hunted. That's who we are, too. She takes his hand. Come away. If you tell the knights you're going, they won't force a fight. They'll have bigger battles ahead of them. Believe me. This is our place, Kevin. And we'll give you a home. Trust her. Negan is silent. What happened to your eyes? Read the crumbled note. You don't need to trust Paramaraga, just trust Kina. Um, forget about trust, nigga. Think about. Uh, think about death when the sound the sand nights are done. There won't be a village left to light the prior. 
they about the death. Oh, they're gonna wipe the village up, got you. The world is full of places, nigga. This hill of yours is nothing special. What happened to your eyes? That's his first. Gives you a hard look, but nigga merely shrugs an ancient long forgotten. He rubs the blind orb with his thick, grubby fingers and shakes his head. It is a smaller thing than you might think. Read the crumble note. Ah, it curves along. It's a big crumble note. But we'll read the next episode. So please like, please have a great, wonderful, spectacular time. Please share this video. And please hit the bell if you subscribe. Have a great all day and week. And keep watching my channel. Bye, everyone.